Good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, I was actually glad to hear in the previous session that uh, Bernard Kress still thinks micro LED for AR is the way to go. Uh, we believe so as well, and we would like to just talk a bit few through the manufacturing challenges and how McLeady Micro Display tries to address those challenges. Uh, introduction I don't think we need anymore. What are the specs for AR? That's are the minimum specs. And there's, I always say that's the five magic points. If you don't have them, you don't have a product. And that is you need a resolution below three micrometer pitch. You need brightnesses exceeding one million nits. Depends a bit on your uh, waveguide system. You need to have a power consumption with a usage scenario which is credible. Image quality, very important. And then, of course, most important, cost-effective volume manufacturer. The bill of material needs to be like a smartphone, otherwise there's no consumer electronic. And the specs are actually pretty similar to what you expect from a hut. So I always say the biggest problem making a micro-LED for AR is not the LED. The biggest problem is how to make the CMOS integration. Because what are the roots of how to make CMOS integration? The most obvious one is you can make die to wafer transfer. Uh, Inium bumping has been done for volume production for 20 years for infrared imagers. You go down to 8 micrometer. Now, you can do that for military or space application down to 3, 4 micrometer, but that's no yield. So if someone shows you a beautiful demo, 4 micrometer pitch, uh, perfect looking micro LED display, and you ask him, is it a die to wafer transfer? And he says you yes, then you know that he has no solution for the manufacturing challenges. Next stage for uh, die to wafer bumping is hybrid bonding. Uh, on the individual die, TSMC with AMD, they do that with memory on logic. They are down to 7 micrometer, but there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of investment, the challenges are not solved. So if you want to have yield, you need to go to wafer to wafer monolithic integration. And there are basically mostly two approaches. One is sequential 3D. You bond either dielectric, dielectric, or metal, metal, an AP wafer on a readout chip, or, and that's our approach, you go to wafer to wafer hybrid bonding. That's the route how you do imagers nowadays. You have a fully processed front plane, you have a fully processed back plane. You bond them together, kappa kappa bonding, dielectric dielectric bonding at the same time. Uh, very tight specs in the process technology, but established for imager, established for flash. Now, and then you talk about yield, because that's the, what you all actually in the end want. Zero defect pixels. So yield, how do you assess that? You can at first say, okay, your yield comes from your CMOS. CMOS yield is pretty good. You get the, the zero values from the foundry. You plug in your area. You know what's your yield of your driver chip. You know, if you know your integration process, you use noun process tools, process modules, you can make a good estimate about your yield of the integration process as well. And then finally, there's, of course, the, the yield of the AP defectivity. And then if you plug in the numbers, you see very fast state-of-the-art Alingap on gallium arsenide will never make it. Gun on sapphire is challenging. In the end, gun on silicon is what is required because otherwise there is no yield. So the message here should be, actually, if you crunch the numbers, the final wafer cost of the fully integrated wafer is determined by the CMOS, not by the AP, not by the integration. But the final die cost, that's your yield of your AP defectivity. If you don't have that under control, there is no yield. So next question which always comes up is, uh, first, a bit about the yield numbers. Uh, to show what means yield, you can make plot the field of view. You can define what's the angular, uh, angular resolution of your display, 40 ppd. You put a pitch in, and you see if you, for example, make 5 micrometer pitch, uh, you cannot make a uh, larger display with any yield. If you, go, you need to basically go to 2, 3 micrometer to get yield. If you, for example, instead of making RGB pixel by pixel, you make separate dies. Every individual die is one third of the original die. Of course, your yield dramatically increases because now the area is in the exponent of the yield formula. That means your yield dramatically improves. So this is actually for manufacturing a better approach if you can use an optical combiner. How do you make colors? Uh, again, just a short list. There are maybe 14, 15 approaches how to make color with uh, micro LEDs, but uh, I grouped them in five categories. You can do pixel dye transfer of individual dyes. A few million dyes on a three micrometer pitch, I think there will be never a yield. You can do pixel tuning. You have a, a, a stack of RGB. Uh, depending on your current densities, you have different colors. At one amp, you have uh, a red color. At 200 amps per square centimeter, you have blue color, and then you can tune. Now, this will not be very bright because you're limited by the red contribution that's at the low current density. That means you're stuck at somewhere like 20, 30,000 nits and you have an amazing flicker because you do pulse width modulation uh, to get the duty cycle for the blue right to, do, to match with the red 
it's just